All right, in this video, we're going to talk about limits, and we're going to jump straight into the definition of a limit, and then I will explain it through graphs, because that is the easiest way to learn it, is through graphs of functions. So here we go. The formal definition is we take a function f of x, and we say that it is defined near some point a. So we say near some point a. And then we say that the limit as x approaches a of that function is equal to some number l. So what does this mean? This means that if we have a graph and we have some function, let's draw it there, we'll call it f of x. If we find some point a on the x-axis, so it means as x, we just say as it approaches a, then it has a value here, l, which is a limit. So it's, it's almost like finding the y-coordinate of an equation, and it basically is. And this is the fundamental idea of calculus, why it exists, and you're saying, this is stupid because this is really easy. And, you know, in some cases it is really easy. In fact, let's take a very simple example. Let's find the limit as x approaches 1 of x. Okay, well, let's graph this equation. Well, this is a very, very easy graph. Uh, it looks like that. And when x is equal to 1, f of x is equal to 1. So we basically plug 1 into x, and then we say it's 1. Okay, really easy. Don't worry. I mean, you guys are saying, what? why would you do that? That's so simple. Why would you start us with that example? And I have to do it because I you need to understand what this is as the idea of a limit. So why do we use these? Well, we use these for situations such as this one. Let's take the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. Now this is a little bit trickier, straight up. Because if we plug 0 into x here, then we get 1 over 0 squared, which is equal to 1 over 0, which is, I have no idea what this means, but we can't have it because we can't divide by 0. So what happens now? Well, then we say, well, let's just take a look at the graph and see what goes on here. Okay, well, 1 over x squared, you can plug in numbers to x to see what you get out, but it looks like this graph here. And it never, ever touches the point 0. So then you ask, well, how can we find the limit of 0 if it never touches 0? Well, this is what limits are for. So what we do in this scenario is we pick a point on the right that's close to 0. And we say, well, what happens as we get close to 0 on the right? So we're going to go towards the right here. And we write this as the limit as x approaches 0 plus. This plus right here, meaning that it comes from the right. So then of 1 over x squared is equal to, well, we don't know yet, so we're going to leave a little blank here. We, we can guess, we can definitely guess, and we can say it's probably equal to infinity since it seems to go up to infinity. So let's put that as, as our guess. And let's try some numbers. Well, let's pick a number really close to 0. Let's try x equals 0 0.1, which means that 1 over 0 0.01 write that as, uh, hold on a second, let's get the eraser out, because even I make mistakes. 1 over 0, 1 squared is equal to 100. Okay, that's a pretty high number, and what we can do is we can get even closer. We can say, what about x equals 0 0.01, and then we can plug that number into our function, and then we'll get an even bigger number, which is 10,000. We'll say, okay, yeah, it's definitely going towards infinity. Okay, so we got it from the right side, so that's enough, right? We can claim that the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity, right? Uh, no, of course not. Because it has to be the same from both directions. So now we're going to do it from the negative side. So we write the limit as x goes to 0 from the left, which is a negative sign. So that is left. And... That is the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of 1 over x squared. Uh, taking a look at the graph, 
I'm going to guess it's infinity. Actually, we can kind of see that both these sides go to infinity graphically, but we should definitely check with numbers. So let's say x equals negative 0 0.1. Well, that's 1 over negative 0 0.1 squared, which is equal to 100. So those are equal. And you can check on your own x equals negative 0 0.01 and you should get that equal to 10,000 as well. So yeah, we can infer, you should keep getting closer and closer and closer to make sure, but we can infer that it's going to infinity. So now that we know it's going to infinity on both sides, then we can say, yeah, okay, that is definitely true. We say the limit as x goes to zero of one over x squared is equal to infinity, and we're happy and we can make that claim. Awesome. Now let's try a function that is a little bit more tricky and I'm not going to plug in numbers for this but you should just to make sure that you know what's going on here okay the limit is x approaches 0 1 over x what does this look like graphically well graphically it never quite reaches 0 because if we plug in 1 over 0 again we know we can't do that so We'll just draw the graph out, and this function is very easy to evaluate with a graph because we can see that as it gets close to zero from the right, it goes to infinity, and from the left, it goes to negative infinity. So what do we say about this graph? Because this is unique. We have both the limit as x approaches zero from the right of 1 over x is equal to infinity, while the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 1 over x is equal to negative infinity. So what does that mean the limit is here as x approaches 0? Well, we have a theorem that says that for in order for the limit as x approaches a of f of x to equal l, it is the same as saying that the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x is equal to l, and the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x is equal to l. So both the left and the right must equal the same thing. So let's take a look. Let's put in some values. Well, if this is equal to infinity, then the one from the right has to equal infinity, and the one from the left equals infinity but we know that the one from the left is equal to negative infinity. So, no, this, this isn't right. It can't be right. So what do we say? We then say that the limit does not exist. DNE means does not exist. You can write this, all of your professors will know what this means. So there you go. There's a graphical introduction to limits, and we need these to be able to see what happens at certain points that aren't defined on the graph. So I'm going to give you guys a practice one on your own that you can attempt. And in fact, I'll even give you the answer in the video. Let's see here. Let's take the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 3x plus 7. Let's pause the video right now and see if you can do this. And then I'll give you the answer when you come back. All right, you should be back by now. And hopefully you have the answer. So here's an easy thing. We just plug 2 into all the values of x right there. So this is equal to 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 7, which is equal to 4 plus 6 plus 7, which is the same as saying 17. So the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 3x plus 7 is equal to 17. If you were to graph this and look at the point x2, then you get that point 17. So if you like graphing them and you understand with graphs, then you can check that out very easily. All right. In the next video, we'll take a look at uh, graphical limits, only with graphs, no functions.